So hey, in this video I'd like to show you how to do this. And also give you some tips and tricks along the way about how to animate and edit so you'll get a good flow in your videos. But I never went to film school or anything, so I'm not an expert. These are just a lot of things that I learned along the way, and I hope you will be able to take something away from this. I'll also be teaching you a little bit of seventh grade physics because, you know what, let's just get to it. Okay, so let's get started with the first one. Uh, ah, you know, actually, never mind. This one was bad. So first of all, when making an animation like this, it's very important to have a real-time playback in the viewport. If you cannot get a real-time playback, at least you should make sure that the playback speed is the right speed. If you use the setting no sync, you will end up having an animation which maybe would run too slowly if your computer cannot keep up the frame rate. This is very bad because you will end up with a very bad timing. So instead, you should pick frame dropping or AV sync. From my experience, they do kind of the same thing. This just makes sure that the speed is always the correct speed and it will skip frames like in a video game instead of slowing down the playback. Another thing you can do to speed up your viewport performance is to go into the render tab, then select simplify and put the max subdivisions and the child particles to zero. This will just make sure that in the preview, you won't have any subdivision, which can be very heavy to calculate on the fly for Blender. So let's take a look at the effect. So the way this was done was actually with a lot of modifiers inside Blender. First of all, I used the string trap modifier to wrap the geometry onto the car, the sticker. Then I used the solidify modifier to push it out to give it some depth and the bevel modifier to add this nice edge to it and then in the end a subdivision surface. Before the subdivision surface, I added the curve modifier. This is the modifier that bends the sticker so it can be animated onto the car. If you would like to see a more in-depth tutorial on how to do this effect from scratch, then you can click on the video card on the screen now. So for this scene, I added a small unrealistic bounce effect after these parts they attach to the car. The rule I made for myself when doing bounce animations is that the speed of the object after the bounce should be equal or less to the speed it had going into the bounce. If you think about physics, it's like the energy the object has moving. It cannot get more energy from the collision. It will always have less or equal afterwards. To give this shot more of a motion design feel, I also animated the grid. So this grid is built from three array modifiers, which just duplicates this small piece in the pattern. Then in the end, I used the skin modifier to give it some geometry, and I used the bevel modifier to add the nice edges to it. To make the grid appear over time, I animated the count value in the first array modifier. So in this shot, I had a lot of animation going on. First of all, I want to take you through how I animate the camera. I often add an empty, which serves as a focus point for the camera. Then instead of rotating and animate the camera, I'm animating the empty. Then it's easier to rotate the camera around the focus point. Even though this might not be possible in real life, I think it gives you much more control over how the camera is moving. Like before, I was also thinking about physics when I made the entire car bounce a little bit when the rear spoiler actually attached to the car. And I think it makes it all look more realistic. Some people have also asked how I did the animation for all these small pieces. But actually, I just animated them with two keyframes. The quick way to do this is just to put them in the final state, put a keyframe on every single object, then go 20 frames back, move all the objects to the start position and put another keyframe. Then you just go through every single object one by one and move the keyframes one frame. When I'm making materials for the lights, I'm always making sure that the model has a lot of layers inside of it. The more complexity you put into the mesh of the lights, the better the final result will just look. For the glass, I also tend to use a roughness map, which is very subtle, not too much, and also a normal map, which adds more detail. I added the link to the normal map in the description. On the inner piece, I also add an emission shader, and I always make sure to have a gradient on the emission, so it's not just a uniform color. And then in the end, just smack one big piece of glass on top, and you got yourself a tail light. So another thing I want to show you is this lattice trick that I learned not so long ago. The idea is that a tire would never be completely round because of the weight of the car. So because of physics, the tire would actually be more flat on the bottom. So a way to emulate this inside Blender is with a lattice object. So first let's just separate the tire and add a lattice object. Let's scale it so it fits the tire. Then go ahead and add 8 cuts in the V and W, and then in U only add 3. This is enough to emulate the effect. Let's go to the front view and add a lattice modifier to the tire and pick the lattice as the object. Then go to the lattice and select the shape keys. Add a new shape key and set the weight to one. Now you can select the middle vertices and start to push them up and see how the tire deforms. You can of course deform it as much as you want, but be careful, if you do it too much, then the tire will look like it's actually a flat tire. The cool thing about this effect is that it works even when the tire is animated. So the last shot I would like to break down for you is this shot with the exhaust pipes. To make this effect, you need a boolean mesh that can cut the holes into the exhaust pipes, but do it gradually so you get this transition effect. 
The way I did it in the animation was horrible. I used some kind of shape key system which was interacting with dynamic paint and it was, it was stupid. So I'll just show you here how to do it in a better way. So the first thing you need is a boolean mesh that can cut the holes into the exhaust pipes. If you'd like to know how to make this boolean mesh yourself, you can click the video card on the screen now. The next thing you have to do is to add a vertex group, call it mask, and then set the vertex pane for all the vertices to zero. Then you can go ahead and add a plane. You'll use this plane to animate the boolean. Select the boolean object and add a mask modifier and a vertex rate proximity modifier. In both modifiers, pick the vertex group mask, and in the proximity modifier, pick the plane as the target object. Now you have to change distance to geometry and set the mode to phase and put the lowest value to 0.99. This will just give us a constant fall off. Now everything is working and you can see how the plane is revealing our brilliant mesh. This method can be used for a lot of other things. You can also add an array modifier on the plane and extend it with a lot of extra faces so you will have a bigger area that will be affected. Now you can set the viewport shading for the boolean mesh to bounce and you will be able to see the holes that the boolean mesh is cutting into the exhaust pipe. So that was it for this time. I hope you learned something and that you got a lot of new ideas on how you can produce your own car commercials or any other commercial or just any video. Please feel free to leave comments below and tell me what you would like to see next. Right now, I'm thinking about doing a car modeling highlights tutorial where I show you some parts of the car modeling process. Thank you for all the support and I hope you'll subscribe if you're new here. I hope to see you in the next one.